Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 2nd of July, 2011. <clears throat> 114 years ago this day, Marconi filed his first patent for a radio device. In 1909, he won the Nobel Prize for his invention. But three years later, he received high praise from the British Postmaster General, saying that those who have been saved have been saved through one man, Mr. Marconi, and his marvellous invention. Today's trivia question is, what event was he referring to? Well, after some very promising B flares that looked as though the uh, sun was getting a bit more active, overnight the uh, sun has died again, and the uh, X-ray GOES uh, plot shows us that we're at one of the lowest background levels that we've seen for quite some time. And let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see why this is happening. We now have three numbered regions on the disk. Region 1242 is getting close to the west limb, but is decaying. Region 1243 is now the most prominent region on the disk, but is only really an average active region with a few large spots. And the newly numbered region 1244 that we talked about yesterday, that emerged so quickly, overnight seemed to decay away again, and is now just a couple of tiny spots, and I suspect it will not be with us for very long. So let's take a look at the evolution of these regions, first in the white light sunspot movie from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. You can see the decay in each of the regions. The only region that has shown any sign of growth is region 1243 in the northeast. Similar story with the magnetic movie. Note that there are a few very weak regions in the southern hemisphere, but they are remnants of old decayed sunspot groups and not newly emerging regions. In the helium-304 images, which represent about 50,000 degree Kelvin material, even the normally dynamic transition region is not showing very much activity. The coronal movie, which represents about a million degrees, shows the relative brightness of the three numbered regions. And you can see that region 1243 is by far the brightest of the three. Note there is nothing behind the east limb, and means that there's no new regions coming over in the next 24 to 48 hours. When we go to the SOHO coronagraph data, and here I've combined the C2 and the C3 instrument into a single image, you can see there's a beautiful coronal mass ejection off the northeast limb. However, it's very, very slow. Just look how gradually it rises above the C2 disk into the C3 field of view. But because this is at a high latitude and in the eastern hemisphere of the sun, it is unlikely to affect the Earth. While the temperature and density of the solar wind seems to remain fairly high, which means, I think, that the high-speed solar wind stream just brushed us yesterday and has gone past, and so we're back into a slow-speed stream. Consequently, the auroral zone does not look very disturbed at the moment, and the KP index has quieted down quite a bit, been varying between 0 and 3 for the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 51, though I expect that's going to fall in the next 24 hours. The X-ray background is decayed to A8 level. Radio sun intensity is at 88 solar flux units. Solar wind speed has dropped to 370 kilometers per second, with a density of 7 protons per cubic centimeter and the KP index is rated as quiet. Perhaps I should just pre-record my 24-hour forecast because it's the same as it has been for about the last week. A chance of C flares, but very little chance of M or X flares. The sunspot number will remain low and possibly go lower. CMEs are still possible, and the chances of a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is unlikely. The composite coronal image, which shows the whole of the disk of the sun at one time, shows us that we don't have very good prospects for new regions coming over the east limb and increasing the levels of activity, at least for the next week. Some folks have been asking me about longer term forecasts. And if you go back to my uh, Sun Today video for the 24th of March, you will see that I actually made such a prediction back then. Where at the time we were getting a lot of M and X flares, which was very exciting, and people were worried about how active the Sun was coming. And I assured them that over the next few months this level of activity would decay away and I predicted the next burst of activity would be in uh, October, plus or minus a couple of Carrington rotations, which is basically a month. So uh, sometime in late August or September, the window opens for that prediction and will close around about December. This, that was basically just for the Northern Hemisphere. So the wild card in all of this is the Southern Hemisphere, which was lagging behind the Northern Hemisphere by a couple of years, which means that it would start around about the beginning of the year but the uncertainty on that is quite huge because we're dealing with a whole hemisphere here and very few examples of such lags in the past. If you would like more details about what is going on in the sun, please follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel and you'll find them listed there along with some global warming videos. The answer to the trivia quiz is the sinking of the Titanic. It was Marconi's radio devices that were on board the Titanic that summoned the two ships that rescued so many people.
and Marconi gave testimony at the inquiry. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.